Okay, so today let's go over the solution to uh, the palindrome problem. And we're going to do it in two different ways. First, what we're going to do is let's actually uh, use our whiteboard here to just write a, um, a string. And what we're going to what we're going to do is let's take the word let's say for example um, hello again and let's put the indices okay so can we create a loop that goes 0 to 4 sure that's just range okay how many numbers are here 5 right so this is going to go 0 to 4 but now that if we go through the letters like that it's going to go h e l l o but what we want is we want to construct this word backwards so we want to go o l l e h and in order to do that the indices we're going to want are going to be 4 3 2 1 0 so now what type of a range um, would that would would get us that so we want to start at four so this is going to be four we want to end up at zero so we can't put zero here or else it's only going to go to one we have to go one past zero which obviously is negative one okay but then the step since we're going backwards from four to three the step has to be negative one also. So, oops, so that is what's going to produce it. Now, just to verify this, if we open up our uh, terminal and we try going range four comma negative one comma negative one, Oh, right. Okay, so uh, this is Python 3. So in order for me to actually see them all at once, I have to put the word list in front of it. Or else it's an iterable that yields values one by one. And if I want to see them all at once, I have to put list. Okay, so it, that's correct. It does do 43210. Um, but... Where does the 4 come from? Where does this 4 come from? Well, how many letters are in the word? There's 5. So therefore, how would I get the number of letters in the word? I'd have to use the len function. So if I said, uh, let's say, s equals hello, okay? then len s would return a 5. But that's not what I want. I want a 4. So I still have to subtract 1. So the full equation for this that is generic would be range, assuming the variable is called s, len s minus 1, that's going to give me 4 in this case, which is what I want, comma, negative 1, which means go to 0, comma, negative 1, which means go backwards, because that's the step. Now, I know this looks kind of ugly, because it's when you, list, when you initially look at it, it's like you see all these negative ones and you're like, what? But honestly, it, it works and it is logical. So if I tried to code this now, okay, so let's, first of all, let's grab a sentence or let's grab a word. Let's say word equals input, enter a word, okay? 
and let's save this as uh, let's save it in um, let's save it in four loops here and let's call it palindrome dot py okay and um, now we've got some highlighting color so when we save this uh, let's iterate now through word but let's go backwards okay so we'll go for um, x in range len word minus one comma go to minus one which means go to zero comma step negative one go backwards then we'll go print x now if I run this you'll see if I enter the word hello it goes 43210 perfect but I don't want the letter uh, sorry I don't want the numbers I want the letters so therefore instead of saying just x which is only going to give me numbers right I want the letters therefore I would go word square bracket x which would give me each letter at a time now if I run it enter a word hello I get ole okay but the problem here is I'm just printing out the um, the letters one by one what I really want to do is I want to construct a new word right just like just like I had here I want to construct a new word that says ole I don't want to print each letter out individually okay so in order to do that I'm going to concatenate I'm going to concatenate the letters together now concatenate means plus or adding strings that means that I'm going to start with an empty string okay so I'll say um, let's call it uh, let's call it just call it rev for reversed right and we'll call we'll just say it's an empty string now I have some insight here which you might not so let's go back to the ter interpreter and let's uh, show you how we can concatenate letters so if I have a empty string now empty string just means I type in two quotes next to each other that those are two single quotes next to each other so in other words there's nothing in the string now if I said rev equals a or if, let's just say like this rev equals rev do you know how before if I said let me back up here I want to kind of give you some context of where this comes from if I say x equals 0 and then I say x equals x plus 1 do you know what's going to happen here? Obviously, x is, oops, my bad. x is going to be 1. So if I did it again, now x is going to be 2. In other words, I'm adding something to x. You've seen this before. I'm about to do the same thing, but with strings. Okay? So what is rev right now? It's nothing. It is a string, but it's called an empty string. It is a string because it has the quotes. Now I'm going to add something to it. Just like before, I'll say rev equals rev plus a. Now what's rev? A. Let's try it again. Now let's try it. Let's add b to it. Now what's rev? A, b. Can you see what's happening? I'm constructing a new string letter by letter by adding to it so there we go now what's rev ABC so using this concept it looks very similar to the to the arithmetic plus right but here we're just simply adding a new letter every time but now if we go back to our code when we run this code 
and we type in a word, it prints each letter out in the correct order, but we're not constructing a new word. So instead of printing the word out, okay, let me undo that and I'll just comment it out so you can still see it. Now instead what I'm going to say is I'm going to say re reverse word is equal to the reverse word, which by the way has to be predefined because I'm using it here after the equals, so I need a value. That's why I have line 3. Because if I don't have line 3, this line will fail saying I don't know what rev is. So now I go plus, and instead of printing word x, which is a letter, I'm going to concatenate word x to rev. And when this whole loop is finished, I will print out the word, the new word, rev. And just to see, I just want to show you what it looks like as it's doing its job. So let's print out rev as it's going, okay? And then at the end, I'll print out the whole word. In fact, I don't re really need to do this now because it's just going to print it out twice at the end. Ready? Here we go. Hello. You see what it did? First, it adds the z first it puts the zero in here. I'll move it out of the way so you can see see the the code. First it adds the zero, right? First time through, rev is nothing, okay? Do you understand how this is working? Every, what's word x? Okay, I mean, listen, um, I could do this, ready? I could say letter equals word x. And then I could say rev plus letter. Now, if I save this, let's just, we don't need this line here. If I save this, if I could control A, control C, and now I do my regular um, kind of, I go to Python Tutor. Okay, there it is. Start visualizing your code now. And I paste this in. Visualize execution. Okay. Uh, enter a word. Hello. Submit. Here we go. Ready? Word is hello. There it is. Watch what happens. Look, look here. Okay. And then this is our output. Ready? Next. We go into the loop. Rev is nothing. Next. X is four. See, len word minus one is four. So x is four. Now watch what letter is now. Letter is O. Next, rev is O. Because nothing plus O is O. Now we print rev, and there's the O. Let's go in again. Now, letter is L. Now watch what watch what rev is going to be. O plus L is O L. Print O L. There it is. Okay. Next, what's our next X? Two. What's word two? Letter is L again. Then we're going to add O L plus L. Ready? O-L-L. -L. Print it. O-L-L. -L. X is now 1. And uh, now that's the E. Letter is E. Rev is O-L-L plus E. Now we're going to print it. There it is. And now X is 0. We're on the last iteration, which means the letter is going to be H. The letter is now H. And then we add it 
we add the H on the end of O-L-L-E and it becomes Ole and then we print it. And so now we have constructed the word backwards. I hope you all understand the way in which this is working. We are using string concatenation, iterating through the word backwards. Okay, so let's go back to our code here. And so what is the purpose of this program? The purpose is to determine if the word is, in fact, a palindrome. So what was the original word? Well, it was called word on line two. So now I could say, ready, if word equals, hmm, what is my newly constructed backwards word? Reverse. If they are equal, then I can say print word is a palindrome. Okay? And if they're not equal, then I say else, and I would say, oh geez, hold on. <laughs> uh, I would say print word is, I'm just doing control C, control V, right? By the way, the way I select the whole line, you just go to the end of the line or the beginning of the line and go shift end, or if you're at the end, shift home, control C, and then control V down here. So if, if, if it's they're not equal, palette, uh, then I would say word is not a palindrome. OK? So let's run this. And I'll say, hello. Hello is not a palindrome. Let's try another one. Race car. Race car is a palindrome. By the way, we don't need this print in here anymore. That was just for testing purposes to see how it works. So if we run it again, and we'll say, Hannah. Hannah is a palindrome. So do you see how this works? OK. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to solve this problem again using a slightly different approach. What I'm going to do is here, I'll even write down the, the first line for you. I'll say for letter in word. So now if you'll notice up here, I'm using range. We're, we're iterating through indices. Here we're iterating through items in the iterable string. So what I want to ask you is, can you construct a string concatenation in this for loop such that, I'm just going to copy this, OK? We'll go Control C, and we'll go, oops, Control V. So, uh, and I'm also going to need this again. Rev equals empty string. Okay. We'll call that empty string. What I want you to figure out is what goes inside what goes inside this loop? In other words, I'm going to give you a hint. Look at line 7. And I want you to think about string concatenation. OK? How, what could you do in order to complete this assignment using the loop in line 16? And, that, and I, know, I know that some of you might already know the answer, but for those of you that are going to struggle, I'm going to give you a hint. Ready? Watch. That was the hint. So um, give it a shot, and I'll pause the, pause the video now, 
and then we'll go over the solution. So what I'm asking you to do is the exact same thing, right? So this, this program does the exact same thing, it's just that I want you to do it in two different ways. Okay, pause the video now and try it out. All right, we're back. I uh, hope you gave it a good shot. So let's take a look at uh, our interpreter again before we go back and kind of take a look at the solution, the second solution for palindrome. And what I want you to look really closely at here, remember, if you look in the top right-hand corner uh, where my face is, I gave you guys a hint. I said, think about doing this versus doing this. So it was kind of a, uh, like a visual hint. But it, it relates to this line here on line, on interpreter line 15. Because, you see, if I have here rev, what is it now? It's ABC, right? Well, let's start again with let's make rev equal to nothing again, blank. And do you remember um, I said, the first thing I said was rev plus a. Well, instead of adding them in that order, let's add them like this. Now what's rev? It's a. Well, that's the same as it was before. How could, how could that be any different? Well, watch carefully. If I now go b, oops, b plus rev, now what's rev? Oh. You see, this is what I did rev plus b, but now I'm doing b plus rev. Now I'm getting ba, not ab. So the order in which you add things, see, so here's the difference. Arithmetic addition is commutative. In other words, 3 plus 4 is the same as 4 plus 3. 3 plus 4 is the same as 4 plus 3. But string concatenation is not commutative. A plus B is not going to be equal to B plus A. The order in which you concatenate things matters. And so now if I do it again, if I change it to C, you'll see that rev becomes CBA. And that is the key. That's the secret. So if I go back to my code now, look how simple it is. Look up here on line 7. I'll just shift and control C, come down here and go control V. But now all I'm going to do is I'm going to change the order. I'll say letter plus rev. And that's it. And if I and and I want you to see how this works too, right? So we'll go print rev. And by the way, let's take out this entire section here so that we're only dealing with the code that we want to analyze. Okay? Triple quotes will turn everything uh, in between them into a comment, and but we still need the input line. Okay, let's run it. And so, let's move it out of the way a little bit so we can see what's going on. Here we go. Hello. And you'll notice it's doing exactly the same thing as we had before. So if I now type in a palindrome, it works. So the question now is, which one do you think looks simpler? This one, where we had to use all those negative ones? Or this one, where we're actually iterating through the letters, not through the indices, but the way we're concatenating matters a lot. See? So my point here is 
there's more than one way to do something, and sometimes the way you do it um, really makes a difference to clarity. Now, it's important for you, for everyone uh, in my class, to understand both ways of doing this, especially uh, uh, you know when we come to the test. You have to understand how to do this in both ways. Uh, why? Because you're learning. You're learning how to do stuff. Later on, further down in the course, we're going to learn something called slices. And then I'm going to actually show you a third way how to do this problem, which is even easier. <laughs> but not yet. So uh, right now, I think we should take a time out. And I'm going to give you guys a little quiz. So uh, I'm going to open up. Now, here's the way we're going to do the quiz. I'm going to come here to the interpreter, and we'll get rid of everything. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to take out a sheet of paper and a pencil. Go ahead and pause the video now uh, while you get out a, sh a piece of paper and a pencil. OK, we're back. So. Uh, I'm going to write some code in the interpreter, and I want you guys to tell me what the output is going to be. So here we go. I'm going to say A equals 5. I'm going to say B equals 4. Then I'm going to say A is equal to A plus B. Now, I don't want you typing this, OK? The only thing you're allowed to use is a pencil and a paper, OK? Because that's what you're going to have on the test. Now, I'm going to say b is equal to a minus b. And then I'm going to say print a plus b. Now, I'm not going to hit enter. Pause the video now. Take one minute to figure out what the answer is. You shouldn't need more than one minute. And then compare your answer to the correct answer. Pause the video. All right, here is the answer 14. OK? If you got it right, give yourself a pat on the back because you're doing well. OK? So uh, let's do another one. So this one is going to be a it's going to be about a, a for loop. Okay? So let's try it. Let's go let's try uh first we'll go we'll try um oops, hold on a sec. This one's going to be a for loop, but um we will first we're going to need to set up an initial value so we'll say z equals 0 okay then we're going to say for x in range 4 then inside here i'm going to say uh Z equals Z plus two. And now I'm going to finish the loop. And now I'm going to say print Z. Pause the video and see if you know the answer. OK, and we're back. Let's see if you got it right. Remember, you can't use the computer for this, only pencil and paper. Answer is 8. That was an easy one, right? That was an easy one. So now I'm going to make it slightly more difficult. Let's try it again. Z equals 0 for x in range 4, 
for y in range, that's right, it's a nested loop. So a for loop inside of a for loop. And I'll go for again. And this time, I will say z equals z plus 1. Finish the loop, print z. Pause the video, and no computers. And don't take more than 30 seconds to do this. All right, we're back. And the answer is 16. Ooh. So now if you think about this, why was it 16? Well, because this inside loop is doing this four times. 0, 1, 2, 3. And each time it's doing it, it's adding 1. So that's the, if we start at 0, that's going to be 4. But the outside loop is doing the inside loop four times. So the, if the inside loop does it four times and the outside loop does it four times, does the inside loop four times, that's four times four. And each time it does it, it's adding one. Four times four is 16. You guys get how that, the math works there? So you, you don't actually have to go through it step by step. If you understand the concept of what's happening, you can find the solution just by applying a little bit of mathematics. So uh, let's change it slightly. I'm going to make it a little bit more difficult. Let's say z equals 0 again, so we reset. And this time, let's use the same loop, OK? But now, instead of saying z equals z plus 1, I'm going to say z equals z plus y. And now I'm going to go print z. Be careful. Think about this carefully. Pause the video. Take a minute. And come up with the answer on paper and pencil. OK. And the answer to this one is 24. I hope you got the answer. Now, let's see if I can describe how to get this answer. If you're kind of scratching your head going, hmm, I don't know how to do this. Let me show you. So we've got, if I kind of pull this over, and uh, yeah, just like that, that's good enough. Let's, let's now uh, clear this. And we can now have a blank slate. So. Notice that the we've got kind of two loops, right? The outside loop, that happens four times. And then we've got the inside loop, and that happens four times, right? And by the way, it's not 1, 2, 3, 4. It's 0, 1, 2, 3. So each loop uh, goes 0, 1, 2, 3. So this loop is iterating over x, and this loop is iterating over y. The inside loop is a y. But on the inside, we say z equals z plus y. That means y is going to go 0, 1, 2, 3. Now, if we add these numbers up, that's going to give us 6, right? So, so this is going to add to 6 every time because the inside loop y is going to go 0, 1, 2, 3 every time. And that's going to add up to 6. But the outside loop is going to do that four times. So we're going to add 6 four times. That's another way of saying 4 times 6. And the answer, of course, is 24. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit 
about how nested loops work. Okay, so I want you to also make note of that word, nested for loops. That means when you have a for loop inside of a for loop. Okay? Um, let's try another one. How about if I say z equals 0 and I say uh, total or no yeah let's say let's say z equals 0 and then let's say while uh, z is less than uh, and let's go 13 if z mod 2 equals 0 I'll say uh, Now, the part here is, um, mm, I should have had another variable. <coughs> so um, that's OK. Well, let's see if this will work anyways. Z, no, I'm, I'm going to need another variable here. So let's, let's back up. And let's go total again. OK, now I'll say while z is less than 13. And then I'll say um, if z mod 2 equals 0, then I'll say total equals total plus 1. And then here after the loop, I'll say uh, z equals z plus 1. And after the loop is finished, I'm going to go print total. See if you can figure out what the answer is. Pause the video. OK, so the answer is 7. So how does that work? Hmm. Notice what I'm doing is I'm starting from 0. Z is 0, right? So if I bring up my paint again here. Let's discard. I'm starting from, right, z is 0 initially. And then I'm saying uh, only add 1 to total if z mod 2 is equal to 0 right here. Well, z mod 2 means if the remainder of it is 0. In other words, if, um, if it's even. Okay. So question now to ask yourself is, is 0 even? Yes, it is. So now we go total equals total plus 1. So now if we go total, initially it was 0. Now it becomes a 1. Then we increment z. Now z is a 1. Is that even? No, it's not. So we don't do anything. Then z is equal to z plus 1. Is that even? Yes, it is. So we add 1. Next one. Is that even? No, it's not. So we do nothing. We go to the next one. Is that even? Yes, it is. We add 1. Next one. Is that even? 
No, it's not. Do nothing. Add one. Is that even? Yes, it is. So we add one. Is that even? Oh, sorry, add one. That's not even, so we do nothing. Add one. Is that even? Yes, it is, so we add one. Is, so the next one, is that even? No, so we do nothing. We add one to this. And then, is that even? Yes, so we add one. Is that even? No, do nothing. Add one to here. Is this even? Yes, it is. Add one. Then we come to 13. And then we say, wait, is Z less than 13? No, it's not. So the loop is finished. And our final value for total is 7. Whoa, that was interesting. If you got that one, my hat's off to you. So remember, during the test, you have to write down the variable, put a line underneath it, and follow the values as I have done here. OK? Any questions? OK, so let's try another one. Um, here we go. This might be the last one. We'll see. Uh, let's say go equals true. And then we're going to say uh, total equals 0. And then we're going to say um, while go, notice in this situation, um, that's not a condition. So while or if is expecting a true or a false. And go is a Boolean value. And it is true. So that is going to work. Okay, So I could say while go, I'll say, now I'll say, um, if total is greater than 24, go equals false. And now I'll say for x in range uh, let's say 3 Total equals total plus x. Print total. What is total? So I want you to uh, pause the video and give it a shot. OK, so let's take a look at how this works. Here is the solution. Ready? 30. Whoa. Now I wonder how this works. Hmm. Well, once again, we need paper to do this. And there's our paper. OK, let's discard the old stuff, and let's start new. So how many variables do we have here? Well, we've got, we've got uh, go, which is true. And we've got total right now, which is 
uh, 0, right? And now we're going to go into a uh, we're going to go into a into a while loop, okay? And this is basically while go is true. And oops. However, um, this while loop has an if statement in it, and we basically we got to make sure that when this total is more than 24, then the go loop will stop. But notice that it, it'll be false, but it's going to do this for loop one more time. Okay. So what's inside here? Inside here is the for loop. And inside this for loop, the, the range goes from range 3, which is 0, 1, 2. Now, if we add these numbers, because that's what total is doing. It's saying total equals total plus x. And x is going to go from 0, 1, 2. If we add these numbers up, we get 3. So every time it goes into this for loop, we're going to add 3 to total. Right? So basically, we go in, we add 3. 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 Right? And then what do we do? Uh, whoa. I, I need some space here. We add 3 more. Now, at this point, uh, if total is greater than if total is greater than 24 well guess what total is equal to 20 oops total is equal to 24 it's not greater than okay uh, guys you're not dismissed so please stop so it's not greater than so it's going to continue and therefore it's going to add 3 more now it's 27. Now it's going to be false. However, it's going to do this loop one extra time before it leaves. And so that's why it's going to get to 30. And then it's going to go back up and it goes going to be false. And that's what it's going to print is the 30. Okay? You guys have to be really careful how this stuff works. So, hope you enjoyed this lesson and we shall see you next time.